Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming the international president of the IAM, Tom Buffenbarger. I welcome this chance to speak to the National Business Aircraft Association. It's not often that a labor leader is invited to speak to a business audience. In normal times, we face each other across a bargaining table or, less frequently, a picket line. We do battle over every dime and every dollar and every contract. We use every tool in our well-stocked toolboxes to prevail at the end of the day. And we instinctively go for the juggler. You do, we do, we all do. Because that's the law of the adversarial jungle we inhabit in normal times. But these are not normal times. In this grave recession, our very survival is at stake. Your companies are fighting to survive. My union is fighting to stem the rising tide of joblessness. And our great country is fighting to recover from the worst economic disaster in 80 years. So we have a choice. We can fight our separate fights for survival, or we can fight together as a team for the survival of this industry and its workforce. I hope that, for all our sakes, that we decide to fight together as a team. So here's where I'm coming from. Over 90,000 IAM members work in the aerospace industry. Over 70,000 more IAM members work in the air transportation sector. I am fully and painfully aware of the challenges facing each one of you in this grave recession. The machinist union is part and parcel of the business aircraft industry. And like this industry, the IAM members are experiencing a ton of pain with more coming down the pipeline. The men and women in this room take great pride in the planes they produce and so do the machinists. Pride is something we have in common. Pride in our planes, pride in our workmanship, pride in our joint success. I flew here on November 11 Alpha Mike, a Lear 60. I'm proud of our jet. I'm damn proud of the fact that IAM members build it. And I'm proud that IAM members maintain it and pilot it. And I am proud of the millions of miles that jet has flown to every state in this union, every province in Canada, and more than 25 nations around the globe. You see, in the machinist union, having an efficient way to visit with our members is vital to our success. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Last year, November 11 Alpha Mike flew to Florida, Georgia, Missouri, Kansas, California, Washington, and Illinois to promote America's Edge, our skills, our kids. Seven states in 96 hours. I have traveled to Labor Day events in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Five states in less than 72 hours to rally our members on a single Labor Day weekend. Could I have used commercial flights to meet those tight schedules? Not really. They don't always fly where I need to go and when I need to be there and with a quick return. They often don't have connections to the smaller communities where many of our members live and work. 
and they are never as cost-effective as November 11 Alpha Mike. Time is money, and that is a hard fact of life for both business and labor. In these days of heightened security, even an hour-long commercial flight can become a three- to four-hour time commitment. Checking baggage, standing in security lines, sitting near gates, planning, planing, deplaning, picking up luggage, hailing a cab, well, it's just money down the drain. Oh, I know what the public image of business jets is. Fancy toys for fat cats. I watched members of Congress play gotcha with auto executives. I watched senators grandstand on the use of business jets. I watched as the President of the United States took his shots at this industry. And then I watched as thousands of machinist union members were laid off because the politicians wanted to score some points at our expense. Well, I've got some advice for those paragons of public virtue. Those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. A congressman who nailed the auto executives on that day in Washington got there on a private jet. The senators who climbed up on their soapboxes to decry business jets didn't bat an eye as they climbed aboard one to fly off to their next fundraiser. And the president? Well, let's just say he owes us a visit to Wichita, Kansas, and we'll leave it at that for a few minutes. Frankly, this industry is too vital to America's success to allow the anger, the passion, and the provocations of the moment to last. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Business aviation supports more than 1.2 million jobs in the United States. Its combined payroll exceeds $53 billion each year. The business aviation generates more than $150 billion in economic output each year. Business aviation manufacturers added $5.9 billion dollars to America's export revenue last year, producing one of the few positive signs in our trade balance. Those are impressive numbers. But numbers are not the lifeblood of this industry. People are. Let us not forget just how impressive people really are. Let's use our political and economic clout. Let's put muscle and manpower where our money flows. Let's work to get the highest levels of our government to speak one little truth. Business aviation is vital to America's economic recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, from a union that's working on its 122nd year, almost twice as old as this great organization, I have welcomed this opportunity to appear before you. I thank you for the kind invitation. We will be your newest members before we leave here, and I look forward to working with you, many of you we already work together with, but I look forward to working with the greater community of the NBAA and with Gamma to promote this industry and propel it back into the future where it belongs. Thank you very much.